Hey yo, this is Matt, and I am really excited about this figure. I waited almost two and a half years for it. Boom. The Batman. From Mezco Toys. If you didn't catch that by the, the tape on the box. One small disclaimer is that if you've been following for a while, I'm not the biggest DC fan. Not that I'm a, a hater by any means. Like I grew up watching, you know, the Justice League cartoons and Batman cartoons. And but I would say Batman is my favorite from DC. And you know, I mean, I think he's a, a top overall like character of mine too. Like I do like him a lot. But I just haven't enjoyed any recent DC stuff for the most part but I did really like this movie. Taking a quick look at the box, see everything that it has in it. Some of the pictures, it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm hopeful when, when Mezco first announced this, I was really excited because I, I figured their style with this design would work out really well. So, so I'm hopeful. It has been a while since I saw the movie. I saw it in theaters and I saw some clips, you know, since then. So, so it's been, I guess it's been over two years as well. So off the top of my head, I don't remember exactly how the style looks, how a suit looks. So you might notice some things that might be off or seem off, but for me, like right away, just grab them out of the box. Like he looks good. Like he looks really cool. The cape is kind of like a fake leather, which at first right now, I'm not really liking it. It does kind of grow on you. One thing that I noticed right away also is the articulation doesn't seem like it's going to be that good, which we'll see. We'll see when we get to that part. The cowl is pretty, pretty solid. I, I like the design. I think it has some some haters and people that are going to compare it to some of the other recent Batmans, but but I like the design and here it looks pretty good. And we're going to see how many other ones it comes with in the face. Some of the spikes on the gauntlets are, it seemed like it was kind of inverted. I thought I got it kind of like backwards or or a, like a messed up order or defect, but, but they do turn and we'll see that later. Like they do kind of twist over the suit, which is, if you can't see, it is all soft goods suit, but then like some of those armor pieces are not really hard. I don't know, like almost like a super thin rubber or like the armor pieces aren't cloth, but then you do have like the cloth like it's a it's a good mix. It's a good blended suit. I remember him using this wingsuit in the movie. Like I think it was just like a one one and done type of thing. Uh, here, seeing it, it kind of caught me off guard. Which we'll we'll try it on him in a minute. A quick look at the accessories and what he comes with. We have four different head sculpts. Three with the cowl on it. And then we have this one, which even if you don't like him as Bruce Wayne or Batman, I think this sculpt looks really good in the paint job. And we do have the separate cowl on the side, just, just for him to hold, I guess. There's a total of 13 interchangeable hands, six of them having a similar pair. And then the one odd number is just this one with the taser hand. There's these different variations of the grapple launcher that comes out under his arm gauntlets. We have a UV light, like stick, baton, and the famous flare. And these ones are the retracted parts of the gauntlet. The sticky gun launcher, handcuffs, the grapple hook, which is like a wire that can be bent and posed and a total of four batarangs. These are separate from the two that come in his hands, where he has a pair of hands that has the battering attached to it. So it's those two hands, plus these four separate batarangs. And then some of these smaller pieces, like cartridges, I didn't know what those were at first, but I think they're smoke bombs, and then also adrenaline pins. The material for this winged suit is the same as his cape. It's kind of like that fake leather. And then it has uh, working zippers and it has Velcro at the bottom where like his feet will come out of. And like with all Mezco figures, it does come with the stand. Applying some of the accessories, I wasn't sure at first how the gauntlet launchers worked, like how they attached. And even because there were like multiple ones, I wasn't sure like 
did they attach to each other or what? As I had mentioned earlier, two of them are the retracted ones. So those ones kind of just stay on him like closed if you're not using it. And then there's two others that are extended, like he's about to use it and it has holes in it so you can apply some of those other accessories like the grapple hook and the cartridges. And then there's a third extended one that doesn't have any holes in it. So it's kind of like, I guess he already used it or it's just like there in case you wanted to apply that. It comes with all of those and they all attach to the same gauntlet hole and they all have pegs on it. So it just kind of plugs in. It's kind of hard to see here, but I am putting in like one of the cartridges and then in the same hole, we can apply the grapple hook, the extended grapple hook which just does have the wire and can be posed or bended however you want. Here's a closer look at the gauntlet launchers and they, they, they do all look identical, but yeah, like I said, there's just one for each hand and then there's one that's kind of closed off with the holes. So now let's take a look at the winged suit. I know it's your guys' favorites. I do find it kind of funny of a design, like when he's in it, it looks like, like a sleep sack that I have some of my kids in like as babies, but in the movie, it was a very practical use. So I, I, I give it that, like it was very, I guess that's, that's what was cool about the movie was that it was very real. Like even though he is a hero, like he was still very human and a lot of the, or most of the scenes were done with reality in mind rather than comic book style. And I think even taking that idea and translating it to this figure, when we look at the articulation, like, yeah, he's not going to have, you know, Spider-Man articulation. He's not going to be able to do all the same poses. And even when I was looking it up, you know, I was trying to get some some fresh ideas from from the scenes, like most of the scenes in the movie, even some of the cool ones, like he's either just walking or he's just standing straight up. So. So posing and the articulation for the figure is very real. I guess some might see it as a negative, but I do really like that about this figure. So it is easy to put this on. It was just kind of the hardest part was just kind of getting the cape in there. As I said, it does have working zippers, which is cool. Like I always like that about some of these small soft goods and it has the Velcro on the bottom. So that's going to form and get them all snuggled in to the suits. I'm Batman. So now messing with some of the other accessories and, and just kind of putting those in. On his right leg, he does have the holster and that is where the sticky launcher goes into. Goes in pretty smoothly, pretty easy, and it looks good. On the back side, he has two slots for the UV lights and for the flare. On mine, the UV light had a like a hole in it and I try to plug it in with one of the smoke bombs, which kind of worked at first because it fit perfectly, but it, it wasn't. I learned that those weren't for that. So it kind of pops out like that after a while. On to articulation. So yes, like I said before, he is going to be pretty limited. I think the biggest thing that limits the articulation is the suit. I do wish it was stretchy, I think, you know, whether you're going for real or not, if it was a little more stretchy of a material, I think the articulation would be better. But I think it's I think right now it's kind of restricting. The cape does have a wire in it, but it's a thin enough wire that it doesn't look obvious. And I think kind of right here around the neck area, like is an important part for for his look. And so because the material is so thin and because the wire is so thin, I think it does do a good job of like you're able to kind of place it down well. Like it might not always be like that, like if you if you pose it and move it, but if you work at it and kind of, I guess, pet it down, like it does lay nicely like that. And the handcuffs, I wasn't sure about, like if they just kind of hang on there, or like connect there, because they do kind of open and close a little bit, but I just left them off. I didn't want to break them or mess with them for this part. Starting off with the classic T-pose, his arms don't really get that high up i think i could get them higher than this for for now like i didn't want to i didn't want to force it i didn't want to push it too much but but you can see like the fabric even under his legs already restricting you know 
which uh, he doesn't have to do the splits. I don't think that, I mean, he might be able to, I guess. Batman's not known for doing the splits, but here this figure can't do that sideways split. And even like at the beginning, like it, it's even hard for him to touch his face, which is like a test I like to do for some other figures. And and that's so much like the like all the padding Even besides just the fabric holding it back, he does have also the, you know, just the armor and the padding that is getting in the way of him fully reaching over. But as I did pose more and mess with it more, I was able to get a better feel and I guess manipulate it a little bit more to where there was some more range with that shoulder and that arm. Cause that's one of the things too with the with the fabric is like he's just uh he's still a figure underneath. And so you have to kind of turn the elbows, like turn the wrist, turn the shoulders in order to get it where it's supposed to go. So it's just a little more work than just a normal like figure arm up. For the knee articulation, at first I wasn't really able to get past the like 90 degree mark like in the video but after messing with him now i was like almost able to you know do a uh, like a butt kick with it so it's it's really good it goes well past 90. but once again like the, the one thing i love about this figure is the details and in this pants with the stitching and then the fabric and just the whole undersuit and how it blends in and meshes with the like that rubber material like that's that's awesome it's it's definitely top notch for sure the last major articulation point is the ab crunch like his hip motion isn't too great and his abs aren't too great and this one didn't really get much better after messing around with him more but for basic running and action shots it was enough to like twist and bend it's definitely far from the best but it, it does work comparing to some other figures one of the ones that i wanted to see the most is with the mafex hush batman which is one of my favorite figures and like I love this design for Batman and this one is a comic design. And so he definitely has, you know, way more range of motion and articulation. It's just a different figure. It's a different design. And I think both of them look good. Both of them are cool. And then we have some Mafex Star Wars characters, Mandalorian and Boba Fett. He's a little bit taller than they are, but Mesco usually measures a little bit taller. We have the Mafex Gambit and Magneto. They're normally taller characters, so they kind of match with him. We got SHF Deadpool and also an SHF Han Solo. Looks like a pretty good squad right there. And comparing to some other Mezco figures, my recently acquired Void Wars Cadets Gomez and the White Krig. Overall, I think he is a very good figure, definitely has the look down, and I think the articulation is good enough to get a lot of cool photos and a lot of cool shots with them. Mm -hmm. 